Wow, it looks so cool, right? And do you find this familiar? I know what you're thinking, but this is not Starship. In fact, it's only a mini Starship developed by Space Epoch, a new Chinese startup. Well, it's hardly breaking news that China's long adored and envied the tracks of SpaceX. Musk has even consistently welcomed competition, and China's entering the arena with its own brand of reusable orbital rockets. China has set massive targets to meet in space transport, and they plan to meet them using the idea of reusables. So is China ready to launch? And how does it compare to SpaceX's Starship rocket? How will they surpass the U.S. in space? By copying SpaceX. Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Space Epoch is a most recent new entrant into China's nascent commercial launch sector and has big ambitions. It secured an undisclosed amount of angel round of funding in August last year and later conducted pressure tests on a 3-meter diameter and 4-meter diameter thin wall stainless steel tanks. Its press releases state it's determined to become the leader of China's interplanetary transportation system and contribute to the country's national space infrastructure and requirement for increased launch capacity. Importantly, Space Epoch recently performed a series of tests of a 4.2-meter diameter stainless steel propellant tank combined with a Longyun 70-methane liquid oxygen engine developed by engine maker Zhizhou Yangjian. The test took place at Zhizhou Yangjian's test site in the Anhui province. The tests are part of Beijing-based Space Epoch's earlier revealed plans to develop a 64-meter tall stainless steel launcher capable of lifting 6.5 tons to a 1,100-kilometer attitude sun-synchronous orbit. A launcher would be able to be reused up to 20 times. The static fire test included ignition and restart test and ignition with low levels of propellant. The complete success of the test also marks with the breakthrough of stainless steel storage tank plus liquid oxygen methane technology. They've laid a solid foundation for the subsequent rocket flight test and also contributed to the diversified development and technological innovation of my country's commercial aerospace, Zhizhou Yongyang said in a statement. SpaceX is meanwhile edging towards its first orbital launch attempt of the 120-meter high, 9-meter diameter Starship at its Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas. In other comparisons, the new Chinese vehicle will therefore be much smaller and less powerful than the SpaceX Starship. Starship is constructed out of 304L stainless steel, which has a higher corrosion resistance than regular steel. It's widely used because of the ease which it can be formed into various shapes. The Space Epoch rocket is made of a thin-walled stainless steel independently developed by Beijing Aero Advanced Technology Company Limited through the research of 23 kinds of domestic and foreign stainless steel material. Both rockets are constructed in similar fashion by welding together several stainless steel rings. Besides, it's understood the company's buying methane engines from another Chinese startup, engine maker Zhizhou Yangjian, meaning Space Epoch does not have to develop its own engines. Zhizhou Yangjin is a rocket engine startup founded in 2017 and was earlier selected by the new Chinese launch startup Rocket Pi to power its Darwin 1 rocket, which could launch as soon as this year. While the Raptor is capable of producing up to 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level, Longyun produces a maximum thrust of 687 kilonewtons at sea level. The sea level and vacuum variants of Raptor have specific impulses of 327 and 363 seconds and for Longyun, it's 290 and 350 seconds. Anyway, Longyun is currently the liquid oxygen methane engine with the largest thrust in China, and also the only comprehensive breakthrough in rocket recovery and reuse technology in China, the high-thrust liquid oxygen methane engine. As well as being inspired by SpaceX in terms of the combination of stainless steel tanks and methane LOX engines, Space Epoch is also using an iterative approach using a style akin to the SN serial number designations for Starship development. XZH1D1 was used for the recent combined test system. XZH1D2 will be used for the first suborbital sea splashdown recovery test during 2023. The ultimate coincidence is at the target. The firm says it's targeting markets including point-to-point -point transportation, space tourism, space station construction, deep space exploration, and planetary defense. Well, it's not the first time China copied Starship. The state-owned Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, or SAST, a major subsidiary of China's main space contractor, CASC, 
is apparently considering using Zhizhou Yangjin's reusable 70-ton thrust open-cycle Longyun engine for its own potential answer to the Starship Challenge. CASC's other major rocket-making arm, the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, or CALT, has also presented a concept for a launcher drawing on the vision of Starship. China's first methane LOX rocket and first commercial developed liquid launcher, Zuke-2, had a test flight last month. It failed to reach orbit, following an issue with second-stage Vernier engines. After all, Elon Musk and SpaceX have been incredibly successful, so it makes sense there would be those trying to figure out a so-called formula to his success so they could achieve it too, and China has arguably been trying to do just that. Despite limited direct cooperation, Chinese officials say they have learned important lessons by watching the American counterparts. Chinese officials are glad, for example, that they did not follow an early decision by NASA in the 1970s to build a large but costly space plane like the Space Shuttle. Instead, they've been impressed by the work of Elon Musk Rocket Company. In 2009, when I first learned about SpaceX in a meeting in the U.S., I was surprised. I'd never heard of this company when I was in the U.S. before. How did it grow into such a large company so quickly, Mr. Zhao Jinping, chief designer of China's crewed space program, said. From watching SpaceX, China's space officials see value in making reusable rockets and spacecraft. The space shuttle is very complicated, Mr. Zhao said. While the capsules China and SpaceX are using are relatively easier technology to ensure reliability and safety, and also more economical. He later asserted that within a few years, we'll be able to achieve the reuse of re-entry capsules for our new generation spaceships. Developing reusable rocket technology in China has become even more important following considerable international criticism of its Long March 5B rockets China allowed massive core boosters from these rockets to fall out of control to Earth while sending each of the three modules of the Tiangong space station into orbit. R. Nicholas Burns, the U.S. ambassador to China, said in an interview he had encouraged China to be more cautious about the uncontrolled re-entry of large rocket bodies. China bristled at the criticism of Long March's 5B core boosters. One caused damage during a test flight in 2020 when it fell in West Africa but none of the rocket stages have hurt or killed anyone so far. At least one more launch of the rocket is planned in 2023 when the Zuntian telescope goes to orbit. Chinese officials say they don't just want to avoid uncontrolled re-entry, but to reuse rockets. The effort to develop a reusable spacecraft is running parallel to Chinese officials' plans to put astronauts on the moon. They've not announced a precise timetable, but have previously hinted it would not happen until later than 2030. The Pentagon predicted in August that China would surpass American capability in space as soon as 2045. I think it's entirely possible they could catch up and surpass us absolutely, said Lieutenant General Nina M. Armango, the staff director of the United States Space Force. And that was at a conference in Sydney the day before the launch of Shenzhou 15. The progress they've made has been stunning, stunningly fast. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Do you think China can surpass SpaceX? Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below because your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.